Hey guys, I'm Jonas with PowerEquipmentMan.com. Today we're going to be getting started on our next new build series. Now this is what's left of a 2010 Yamaha G29. Now we picked this frame up for cheap off of Marketplace as a project that someone else had started and just didn't get very far on. Now our plan with this project is to do more of a off-road buggy or cross cart style build. Now to do that, we're planning on relocating the battery from underneath of the seat to behind the rear axle. Now that should allow us to mount two bucket style seats down low in the frame. Now we want to do that to try to help keep our center of gravity as low as possible. Now that should help improve the stability and handling of this cart. Now throughout this entire build we are going to be going over some of the different products that we're using. Now even if you're not planning to do a crazy all out build like this, a lot of the parts that we're using on this cart are just standard golf cart parts that you could put on any cart. Now this is gonna kind of help you guys understand what different products are available and what those different products are gonna do and some advantages or disadvantages to them. So you guys know what to look for when you're building your own cart. Now to start out, the first thing that I did was go ahead and cut off a bunch of the tabs and brackets on the frame that I knew we weren't gonna be using. Then we ground everything down to get it all nice and cleaned up so we've got a good clean slate to start with. Then we went ahead and installed a Magjack 6 inch A-arm style lift kit. Now this probably isn't the lift kit that's going to stay on this cart because we're really wanting this thing to ride pretty smooth and these lift kits don't give you the best ride quality. But we had a bunch of these lifts sitting on the shelf that we had gotten a good deal on and it's going to give us a good baseline to start with so we can see how this cart is actually going to perform once we get it up and drivable. Once we know what we've got, then we can kind of look at where we need to make improvements to get the suspension and handling to do what we want. Now once we got that lift installed, we went ahead and put some 23 inch tall tires on this cart that were a little more of an aggressive tread pattern. Now that's really kind of the look that we're going for with this overall build is more of that aggressive off-road style. For our powertrain for this build, we decided to go with a Navitas 4K motor with their 600 amp controller. So we're going to be converting from the old DC setup to now a new AC system. Now there's a lot of different advantages to going from DC to AC and a big part of that is how much power and extended range you're going to get out of an AC setup. Now we're also going to have a ton of different adjustability with this setup using their Bluetooth app in your phone. So your phone connects right to this controller and you can make a ton of different adjustments right on your phone. Now we're also going to have their on the fly controller mounted on the dash. Now this is just a quick and easy way to be able to make adjustments on the fly. The other nice advantage to this is if we have some kids or younger people, somebody that we want the cart to go a little bit slower for, we can easily turn these settings down and then lock this controller out. Now that way they won't be able to make any adjustments to it while they're actually driving the cart. Now the other really nice thing about these Navita setups is you can change your battery voltage input setting. So what that means is your standard setup like on a G29 like this would just be a typical 48 volt battery pack. Now whether that was a lead acid battery or if you went to a lithium battery, either way you can change those settings in the Navitas app to be able to run that 48 volt setup. Or if you're looking to get a bunch more power, you could upgrade to a 72 volt battery and just change it in the app that you're going from 48 volt to 72 volt. That's going to give you a bunch more power and top speed, longer runtime, just by being able to change that in your app without having to change any other motor or controller. Now to power that Navita setup, we decided to go with the Roy Pow 72 volt lithium battery. 
Now, when we started looking into lithium batteries, there's really only a couple of big manufacturers that I would trust. Now, there's so many little companies that have popped up over just the last couple of years selling lithium batteries that it's hard to know where you should be buying a battery from. In my opinion, there's really only two or three big suppliers out there that I would trust getting a lithium battery from that they're actually gonna be around for a while. Now, if you guys didn't know already, Roy Pow is now the factory supplier for all the new Yamaha lithium carts. So if you walk into a dealership to buy a brand new Yamaha golf cart with a lithium setup, it's gonna have a Roy Pow battery in it. So that tells me that Roy Pow is gonna be here for a long time. Now there's a ton of advantages to going from an old lead acid setup to a new lithium battery. One of the big ones is the amount of power that you get out of a lithium battery. So you're gonna get a lot more acceleration and power from a lithium setup than your old lead acid batteries. Another big advantage to going to a lithium battery is they have no maintenance. So when you're comparing them to a lead acid setup, those lead acid batteries, you've constantly got to add water to them and you've got terminals corroding and they can smell and leak if you overcharge them and the batteries boil over. But with a lithium battery, you just don't have that. There's basically no maintenance to a lithium battery. You never have to check the water level. They don't smell. They're not going to leak. There's really nothing to these lithium setups. Now on top of that, a lithium battery is also going to be a lot lighter than a full pack of lead acid batteries. So it's not uncommon for a set of lead acid batteries to weigh four, five, six hundred pounds for a whole pack of six batteries. Now when you're looking at just like a 48 volt lithium setup, they're typically around the hundred pound range. So you can lose four or five hundred pounds just by going from your lead acid batteries to a lithium battery. So by going to a lighter weight battery setup, it's gonna be a lot easier on your cart. You can just imagine if your cart weighs 500 pounds less, it's gonna be a lot easier on your brake system for that cart to stop. It's gonna accelerate a lot faster because it has less weight to try to move. Your suspension components are gonna last longer because they're holding less weight. So being able to lose that much weight by going to a lithium setup is a really big deal. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you want to go with a lithium battery manufacturer that's going to be around for a while. So if you have a company that says, yeah, we'll give you a 10 year warranty, but two or three years later, that company disappears. Well, that extra warranty really didn't do you any good when the company's not around anymore. On these Roy Pow batteries, they give you a five year warranty. Now they have two different distributors here in the US to help you with any warranty issues that may arise in the future. Now also these lithium batteries, they rate at a 10 year lifespan. Now when compared to a lead acid setup, Typically, you're going to get three to five years out of a set of lead acid batteries. So you're getting double the lifespan or more out of a lithium setup than you will a lead acid. So while it may be more expensive up front to go with a lithium battery, it ends up paying out a lot better in the long run than having to buy two or three sets of lead acid batteries versus just one lithium battery. Now, when you buy these kits from Roy Pow, they do come with everything that you need to convert your cart. Now, they have these batteries available in several different voltages and amp hour sizes. So you can get a 36 volt, a 48 volt, or this 72 volt, and then you've got a couple of different amp hour choices. Now, those amp hours are gonna be how long the battery actually lasts, so how far you can go on a charge. Now we chose to go with the 72 volt, 105 amp hour battery. So this should give us all the power that we need to run that Navita setup in the settings that we wanna be able to run. 
Now, if you go with a smaller 48 volt setup, the battery itself is quite a bit smaller and takes up less room under the seat. Now, also included in this kit is going to be your onboard charger. So this is really nice to have a charger that's going to just mount underneath the seat of your cart and stay connected to the battery all the time. That way, if you ever need to charge your battery, all you've got to have is a 110 extension cord. So you can just plug into any regular old outlet and plug it into your cart and be charging your battery. Now in the kit, you're also going to get a heat sink for the brake resistor. So you're actually going to mount this outside of your battery compartment where it can get a lot of airflow and that's going to help keep this system cool. Now you're also gonna get a remote on off switch. So this is gonna mount up on your dash and give you an easy way to just push this button to power on your battery or turn it back off. Then you'll also get a battery gauge that's gonna mount up in your dash as well. So this will tell you approximately how much battery power you have left. Now these kits also come with the brackets and hold downs that you're gonna need to install it in your specific cart. So that helps make this a nice complete kit that you can easily install in just about any make or model of cart. Now if you're considering going from lead acid to a lithium setup and you have just a plain stock cart, so you're running just the factory motor and controller, you just got to make sure that you choose the right voltage battery for your system. So like on the Yamahas, most of those are a 48 volt. So you would just choose the 48 volt lithium battery in whichever amp hour setup you want. Then when you get that battery, all you've got to do is pull your lead acid batteries out, drop in your new lithium battery, hook up your charger and the heat sink underneath of there along with your two components in the dash. And you can hook that new battery right up to your factory controller and be able to run it without having to make any other changes. Now, when you start looking at all those advantages of going from the lead acid batteries to a lithium setup, it's really kind of a no brainer. So you're gonna get a lighter weight battery that's less wear and tear on your vehicle. You're gonna get better acceleration, better performance. You've got a battery that's going to go longer per charge and then recharge faster when it does need to be recharged. They can store a lot better. These can sit for up to eight months with a full charge and still be able to just turn on and go. You've got a 10 year lifespan with a five year warranty. So overall, it just makes a lot of sense to go from the lead acid batteries to the lithium setup if you're needing to replace those old batteries. Now we're really looking forward to getting to test out this Roy Pow battery. Now we're definitely going to be pushing this battery to its limit. I want to see just how much juice we can get out of this battery as we're going to be looking to get the best performance we possibly can out of this build. Now the next thing we needed to do was figure out how much stretch we actually needed in this frame. Since these seats are getting mounted down low in this frame and you're down closer to the pedals, we had to extend that frame so that your legs are in a nice comfortable position when you're actually on the gas and brake pedal. So we ended up adding about 12 inches worth of length to this frame and that seems to be just about perfect as far as comfort when these seats are all the way back. Now these seats do have sliders on the bottom, so we'll be able to easily slide these seats forward if someone shorter wants to be able to drive this cart. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this frame rail box back in so it's nice and strong, and then we need to get started on our battery box out back. Now the idea back here is to try to keep that big battery as close to the axle as possible. So the farther that battery hangs off the back, the more leverage it's putting on the back of this cart and it's just going to want to make it wheelie all the time. So to get our battery tucked in as close as possible, we're going to end up cutting off this back section of the frame rail. Once we do that, we'll build a box that fits around our battery and then just attach that box to the back of the frame. So 
So here's what we came up with for a battery box. So we ended up cutting off about 10 inches worth of our frame back here and then connected this box to the frame down low, but then we also added in a couple of tubes up at the top here just to help give it some extra support. Now we'll also have the bars coming down from our roll cage that will turn and drop right into these back two corners as well. So that's gonna give us three different places that this battery box is tied in securely with the rest of the frame to make it nice and strong. Now once those roll cage bars are done, we'll be able to fully enclose this box with sheet metal. Now that'll help protect our battery and keep it dry. Now on that sheet metal, we will have each end easily removable and the battery is actually going to slide in from the end and then be able to bolt down to this frame and then we'll have our wires coming off of that battery running right up to our solenoid and motor right out of this battery box that'll help keep our cables nice and short now we're all out of time for this week so in our next video we're going to get started working on the roll cage and see if we can get most of that figured out how we want it and working on the floor so we can start getting our seating position figured out as well now if you guys want to check out any of the products that we're using throughout this build, we will have links to those products in the description down below. Well that's going to wrap it up for today guys. If you got some good value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.